an American pyramid. A concrete giant in an unforgiving desert. Building a dam, it's a lot of hard work, I gotta tell you. Many said it couldn't be done. Many died in its construction. Hoover's not just any dam, it was the first of its kind, size, magnitude. Its completion was a victory of human courage in the face of adversity. It tamed the mighty Colorado River, made the desert bloom, and changed the southwest of America forever. It's just incredible to watch and work around the power of water. Hoover Dam straddles the state line between Nevada and Arizona in the American Southwest. Hoover Dam is a vast concrete wall that holds back the Colorado River and forms Lake Mead. Only 45 feet thick at the top, at its base it's almost as thick as it is tall. It stands 726 feet high and contains almost 7 million tons of concrete. Pat Paternostro inspects the labyrinth of tunnels and conduits inside the dam wall. It's quite a bit of concrete. They've said you could pave a highway from San Francisco to New York with the amount of concrete is placed here. In its day, Hoover was the biggest dam ever built. It remains the largest concrete dam in the Western Hemisphere. But it is more than just a wall. It's a work of art. Ordinary concrete surfaces are transformed by Art Deco designs. There are intake towers standing 400 feet above the lake bed. Italian craftsmen applied the finishing touches, which give the dam its outstanding beauty. Over 38 million visitors have come here to admire its grandeur. They soon learn that without Hoover Dam, the Southwest would be a very different place. Before Hoover Dam, Las Vegas was an unknown railroad stop in the middle of the desert. The dam brought water and electricity, fame and fortune to Nevada. Vegas has never looked back. In L.A. too, the population relies on Hoover for much of its power and water. The dam generates 4 billion kilowatt hours of hydroelectricity every year. Hoover's power plant contains 15 130 megawatt generators. Just one could supply a city of 400,000 inhabitants with all their power needs. But hydroelectric power is just a commercially useful byproduct. Hoover Dam's real job was to control the Colorado River. The Colorado ran wild for countless eons as it carved the Grand Canyon in its race southwest to the Gulf of California. America's most dangerous river seemed untamable. Annual spring floods caused misery and ruin for farmers in Southern California. When the river dried to a trickle in the hot summers, crops withered and cattle died. Hoover Dam was conceived to control floods and store water for irrigation. Work began in 1931 during the Great Depression. 
For unemployed young men like Lee Tillman, news of the Hoover Dam project was electrifying. I read in the newspaper and heard on the radio that they were going to build a big dam down on the Colorado River and that uh, the government was going to spend $165 million. That was a lot of money in those days, and it had a promise of uh, an opportunity for a young man. I was 18 years old. Along with thousands of others, Lee headed for Las Vegas. He was one of the lucky ones and quickly got a job as a truck driver. I got $5 a day driving a truck down there. I could go into a grocery store and feed my family for a week on $5. So, you know, there's a big difference between, you might say nothing, and $5 a day. The deadliest job belonged to the high scalers, men who swung from ropes a thousand feet above the ground to blast and scrape the canyon walls in preparation for the dam's concrete. It was said that only the most desperate became high scalers. If you weren't starving, you didn't need this job badly enough. It was two years into the project before the first concrete could be poured. The dam wall was raised in interlocking blocks. A mountain of concrete was delivered in buckets, eight cubic yards at a time. The concrete was poured 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year. Working conditions were extreme. 1931 was the hottest year on record. Temperatures soared above 140 degrees Fahrenheit. None of us were used to this heat that came from someplace. So there's no place like the heat was here then. The canyon was an oven. By August 1931, 14 men had already died of heat exhaustion. The conditions were so harsh that at first Lee barely registered the magnitude of the project. After it began to come up a little ways, one, I remember thinking one time, my gosh, uh, I'm a part of something that's just uh, tremendous. And uh, from then on, every time I'd come down, I, I'd see that dam seem like it'd grow a little bit every, every, every time I come down. And it, it, was, it was amazing. And, and then I really began to feel I was a part of something very important. For two solid years, the concrete continued to pour. Then on the 29th of May, 1935, the job was done. Two years ahead of schedule and under budget, an army of the unemployed had written itself into the history books. It took over six years for Lake Mead to fill up behind Hoover's gigantic wall. So about 200 feet from this wall here, you have the force of Lake Mead angling downward on us. It's about 45,000 pounds per square foot. So if it breaks today, we're going to Mexico. <laughs> Hoover Dam and Lake Mead transformed the Southwest almost overnight. They stopped the vicious cycle of flood and drought, replacing it with a constant flow of water. Southern California became America's salad bowl. Hoover Dam is no longer the largest dam in the world, but it is still the greatest. It's both a masterpiece of engineering and an architectural classic. 96 men died during its construction, not including those who perished from heat exhaustion. But the rest of the 5,000 overcame the heat, the danger, and the depression 
to produce a monument to the sheer will of humanity. Their achievement is second to none.